here on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss Talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, I'm a day all gone. Man, hey, man, we just chilling in the cut, man. Hey, man, we got a guy here today, a special guest, man. A guy that don't need no introduction. You know, that's my way of saying thing, man. Ice Gizzle's in the building. What's going on, baby? Wow. What's down with y'all, man? Hey, Appreciate man. Appreciate y'all for having me. Man, say, man, New Orleans, man. I'm bro. You just pulled up, man. Hey, that's how I'm rocking, you hear me? Yeah, man. Hey, man, just just give us a little backspill on just your whole how you came in the game, really, from a young age, man. I want to hear how it was growing up in New Orleans, man. Man, Chopper City was uh, gun smoke city, man. You know, you had to be a gangster. Get off, you got off that porch, you either went into a casting or you went into your own lane. You know what I'm saying? One of the two. There was no in-betweens. So, uh, basically, man, at eight years old, I was homeless, a uh, runaway. You know, I was in the foster care system and stuff. So, I ran. So, your parents to, didn't come looking for you? My mom, she was uh, in prison, you know, for okay. the death of my little brother. Yeah. So, mm. she, your mom How killed your brother? How old was your brother when he died? He was like three months. Mm. Yeah, he was a twin. It was like she didn't do it though. You know what I'm saying? She went in for starvation and the neglect of an infant child. Okay. Oh yeah. yeah. So it was she tough. wasn't taking care of him the way she should have. Well, she couldn't but take she, care. Of him. She, she, she. This is what it is, right? My mom's sister was taking care of us, supposedly. Mm-hmm. But she was young herself, so all she wanted to do was be on the phone, talk to the boys, you know, how they rocking oh, Where was your mom at this time? She was on tour with Prince, you know what I'm saying? She was with that Power Generation crew at that time. So she was in music? Yeah. So yo, so you, so you saying that your, 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 really it was your auntie that was really the one that yeah, was... Yeah, she was mm-hmm. responsible. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, like that. Right there. There you go. So, so where was your dad at this time? What that is? Huh? What is that? <laughs> so he was nowhere in the picture at all. I mean, I'm a, I was aware I had a sperm donor, but that that was about it. Never met him. Nah, I, I mean, since I've been grown, yeah, I met him, you know. But mm. nah, that he ain't wasn't what that there is. for you for y'all. Wow. wow, it's it's man. I got story behind stories. You know, that's how I got so many books I wrote while I was in prison. And people are like, you got a wild imagination. Nah, that, it's your nah, life. This is so, my so, life. So let's talk about mm. mom, though. Mom. So how long was she locked up? She did like eight and a half years. Then she had to fight for the system, fight the system for like four, five years to get all Take her cheering back. back. You know, how many saying? kids were there? Six. Six. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And they split they them all split up. Us all up. I was yeah. about to say they that. They put I, us I in figured. tools, yeah. But you ran away. Yeah, I ran away because, you know, foster care, man, them people don't care nothing about them children. You the oldest one? Yeah, I'm the oldest. That's why the rest of them didn't run away. No, nah, they didn't run young. away. But I hated it because they went through some stuff that I refused to go through. You know, mm. being raped, molested, all kind of wild stuff. You how know? many boys and how many girls? Uh, It was five boys and one girl at the time, you know. Mm. But five now boys. it's like more, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, five yeah. boys and one girl. You, and you was the oldest. Mm-hmm. And you and you had to. Why did you leave? You just was hanging out on in Calio projects. Nah, I was had? in the Magnolia. You was in like, the Magnolia. Yeah, up under that boy. You, know, I was like one of the major dogs. You hear me? Like, wow. You know, I had, I'd rather be out there than be in there. You know, the, the Magnolia projects ain't that 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 was that. Uh, was it Master P or was it was nah, Lil Wayne? P come from the Cali yo, uh, Birdman and all from them the Cali yo. We give him a bottle, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah so the Magnolia was was that uh, was that BG? BG from the Thirteenth, yeah. You know he know where all of them from. That's why I'm asking. Yeah. So he from the Thirteenth. Yeah, he been gone by thirteen years. <laughs> yeah, he about to come home. Yo, this is last year. Oh, it is. Yeah, yeah. I just no, left I him. Like I BG. heard it. We seen him up yeah, there. We no, hung out with him. He was sweet. He's <laughs> sweet. That nigga. He was sweet to me. Well, uh, he was cutting up a little bit. He was drunk. Them if he ain't like it, yeah. He <laughs> was, you know what I'm saying? He don't like it. He vicious. You heard me? Like nice to me. Yeah. So that's so my dog. Being, that's my yeah. Being from such a uh uh So you uh, write him. 
I haven't, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I passed them through the system, you know. Okay. Yeah. I kept getting shipped around. You know how it is. When mm-hmm. you got too much fame and popularity and stuff, they stay on you. You get caught with a phone, get caught with some dope or whatever, this and that. And they move you around because you mm-hmm. got too much, you know, like well, Larry Who and all of them. They, mm-hmm. they got to lock you away from people because you got too much Access, influence. Right. Yeah. But, but being from Louisiana, you went to Louisiana prisons. Yeah, I was in... I'm in the feds, so they okay. ship you around. Okay. So okay. I started out in Louisiana. So after putting in some work, you hear me? You know, I got shipped to Florida, then moved around, hit the smooth, you hear me? Like, so smooth you, program. I you did had, everything but ADX. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Thank God, you hear me? How, is it ADX bad? I don't know. Yeah. You're looking at me like. <laughs> yeah. So how long? Wow. That, that's, that's 23 and 1. You hear me? Like. That's one day of recreation a day. That's the only light you see. One day of recreation yeah. a day. One day of recreation a day. 23 hours in your cell. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So if you got 25 years, imagine how much free time you got. Because you, all, I always heard that, you know, com- um, state prison compared to feds. Like feds is like a walk in the park compared to state prison. It used to be that way, but it ain't that way no more. I'd rather go to state now than go to the feds. The feds is wild. You got to knife up or wife up just to live. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So so when you when you think about uh, the whole situation with how, first of all, you didn't tell us, how did you end up going to prison? Well, <laughs> man, I got a string up. My, my rap sheet is long. I ain't going to say going to I'm prison innocent the first time. about you know, yeah, you know, it started. Now, I ain't going to lie. My first time I went, I was innocent. You heard me? Mm-hmm. Like, because I went in for some gun charges, but I took charges for my homies. Same thing oh, BG okay. did. You know what I'm saying? BG took them charges. Mm-hmm. Them one his. You know what I'm saying? But like a real nigga was just like, I ain't going to let my partner and them go down like that. I could take that. So I'm, he took that. You know what I'm saying? And me, I did the same dumb ass shit. Excuse my language. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you I did the same taking, thing. Taking the charge. So after that, you came out from that. What happened the next time? I mean, I'm in the streets now. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't, I'm on their radar. So every time, you know, you got to have an iron in the streets to live. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I basically told the police, every time y'all pull me out, well, y'all might well get the SWAT team, you did? Because uh, <laughs> I'm going to be loaded. You heard me? Like and a how bum old in the were you alley. At this time? How old were you? 16, going on 17. So you was, at a young age, you was... Uh-huh. Mm. Yeah, I had to. I mean, imagine what I seen at eight years old. Pregnant women right. inserting needles inside of their cat, you know what I'm saying, just to find that nerve so they can get high and stuff, and they nine pregnant. months pregnant. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Drugs, just people getting whacked and killed in front of you just... You don't blink no more. You're you numb see it to so it. more, you numb to it. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? I had seen so much, so I knew what I had to do. Did you know how to love at that point in your life? I thought I did, but I didn't know what love was. Because everything that I took in was the homies from around the way. Because they took me in, but on the cool, they was using me. Mm-hmm. Well, should I say misusing me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, misusing you. you how know? many times you were in prison? I went to the state three times. I've been to the feds once. And wow. that was the last time when you went to the feds? I just got out. How I many mean, years? I've been out a year. How I many just years? did 10. 10. Man. And and so being locked up like that and coming home after all those years, what was the most changing thing that you experienced when you came home? Cell phones, electronics. Everybody like, always say that. You know what I'm saying? Like all this weird stuff, people <laughs> talking to themselves, walking around. I'm like, whoa, what the? You know, like. This zombieville, what's going on? Then the corona at the same time. Like, I didn't mm. deal with none of that when I was in prison. So, Because you were in prison when corona was going on. Right. How now did that you affect heard, you there? Because then I've heard different didn't. cells, different prisons was going through lockdown because of corona. No, not until recently. Because at first we knew nothing about it. They tried to shield us from that. Oh. Yeah. But and it didn't when stop people, people from visiting? getting sick and getting died, yeah. You know, people starting getting sick and all this stuff, and they try to say, oh, it's just pneumonia. Oh, it's just, he died from this, he died from that. You know what I'm saying? Was there a lot of people dying? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. They don't care. They don't care. 
They gonna make money the off you four ways without you even blinking. They don't care. Wow. Um, so when you think about you know the times when you were locked up, what was uh, I know you was in plenty of riots. What 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 riot oh, stick? Man. What riot sticks out <laughs> the most to you? We were just talking about this the other day. The wildest riot I ever been was behind a homosexual man, behind a homosexual. Now, this homosexual come in right, and he got some money. So usually, somebody gonna take him up under his wing. But in a federal system, you got what's called cars. Gangs are considered cars. So you're going to come in and you're going to ride with your city or you're going to ride with the gang. And if you don't ride with that, you're riding with religion. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So either way it go, you got a knife up to keep them wiping up and stay ready to keep them getting ready. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because you're basically responsible for everybody else's BS. Mm -hmm. You are. Because... If I'm on New York time and say two of my homies go on B block and rob a dude from Memphis and go in this cell and take something, well, that's on all of us. That's on all of us. Mm. So when the riot kick off, they're going after everybody from my city. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's terrible. And if you don't know about it, that's the worst thing ever. Three Cut walking down the block guard. and 20 people just jump on you, just start stabbing mm -hmm. you to death. And you don't even know why. You ain't trying to fight back because you still on this, what did I do? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What you mean by you ain't trying to fight back? They jump you, you going to start fighting back? I mean, you will, but <laughs> let's let's just be honest. The, the the initial content is, whoa, what you tripping out? What, what, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, so, you know. Wow, so you, you so were you stabbed in there? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I had my feel for give, it. Uh, give me an incident where you were stabbed. You know, I go in on in this same be. this same riot that I'm talking mm -hmm. about. You know, I was on Crip Time. I didn't get on Texas Time. I got on Crip Time. What is Crip Time? I was gang related. Okay. You know, what I'm saying? I just want to make sure because yeah. I, I figured that's yeah. what it was. So I roll with that. Mm -hmm. So um, one of my homies. They, they didn't get mad all they want to. One lay down, two good up. He a punk. He a punk. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You let the dude serve you. They started off a money thing. You got him under protection and all this old kind of stuff, but you letting him suck you up and do all this. You a punk, dog. For sure. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, a Hispanic dude from Latin Kings ended up coming down the way six months later, shit from another unit. Come to find out the punk came from that prison yard where this dude was at and that was his thing mm. so when he come over here he wanted his little bra back because mm. he know where she worked so some way it got twisted they got into a heated debate about it my homie wasn't coming off the pump you know what I'm saying so that led to them getting into a scrap he stabbed him. He stabbed him a couple times. They come out with the guns and stuff. They start shooting and stuff. Made everybody lay it down. They locked us down. The very moment that we came off a of lockdown, everybody knew what it was. Knife up. It's going down. And this creates more chaos than a little bit because even though you may not be a crip, he not, he on something about this and that. Everything black get attacked. They ain't trying to hear it. When you dealing with different races and stuff like that. Ain't no, nah, let him make it. He cool. Ain't nobody trying to hear that. I don't care how many times you're sitting spread together. How many times y'all got money together? So dope together. One of y'all got to die. So when the doors opened, everybody went at it. Blood was everywhere. Stabbing, stabbings, beatings. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no. But I you would it. think that them security guards know that once you open them doors, that's what that was going to happen. They know, they know, and they ain't just standing by waiting. They don't run the prisons. We do. Mm. They just work there. We gotta live there. So if you want to make it home off your eight to twelve hour shift, mind your business. Got you. Wow, man, that's that's crazy, but it's one hundred. Um, so another thing, like. Um, 
to be down there and not have the financial support, you would have to either a you know make a store or figure out a way to hustle, sell tattoo ink, uh, figure out. I know I'm a hustler. Uh, uh, figure out ways to, to to gamble, make some dice, or you know get some dice There's all in. All kind of ways. Uh, what was the thing? Did you have the support in the free world, or did you have to go for yours and and just try to figure out ways to make ends meet? I had support, you okay. know, which is good. I didn't want the support anymore because I was married at the time. So my wife, my ex-wife, she held me down. Okay. But the way she held me down when I found out, I I wasn't with it. Okay. So we cut ties. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But and, uh, but so you didn't have to you didn't have to do all the crazy stuff to make sure you had money in there. Or you probably just was, I didn't, you probably but was I did in it out there making I op- yeah, making some things happen. Yeah. Because you nigga wanna make moves yeah. when he in there. I made moves because yeah. I got kids and Correct. they still gotta live. They still gotta you know, I won't see them go to college. I still wanna do something. So you flipping what you get. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I take my money and stuff. I tell my partner, you go ahead and open this store. And just give me back this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm slinging K2, trying to get it through the mail. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I sent my daughter to college. No, you know what it. I'm saying? I get it. From there, just off of pieces of sprayed on paper. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Did what I have to do. Had I to. just got to do what they got to do. And if that's cut somebody, rob somebody, you know, gamble, lie on the phone. Many of us get on the phone and we're alive. You know what I'm saying? Oh, these dudes going to do something to me if you don't send me yeah, some money, yeah. dude, this, this and that. Well, let me ask you this. Did you, run, you say you ran into a BG a little bit in passing in there, but did you ever run into relatives, people that you was, you know, oh, like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, like oh, uncles yeah. or, you know, anybody yeah. close kin? You see yeah. what I'm saying? I did. But what happens is we can speak. But if we on two different sides of the of the track, it ain't it, I, it ain't nothing I could do for you. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. What, the, what the worst, the best thing I could do for you if some jump off, I can warn you ahead of time and tell you stay out the way. Yeah. Cause this ain't for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But if you want to help your homeboys, did this and that, my hands is tied. Yeah, and you know there was a, like like killings and stuff in there. What what was the first incident in there where you seen or or you knew somebody got killed? Oh, I watched a nigga get killed behind a piece of chicken. Okay, what was fried that about? Chicken. Uh, explain fried that to me. Fried chicken? A hmm. piece of fried chicken. Every Friday they serving the same meal. You know the menu, the prison menu. Everywhere you go, it's gonna be the same. So everybody know on Friday you getting fried chicken, uh, potatoes and mashed potatoes and gravy, a piece of cake or a pie, or either some fruit cocktail. You know what I'm saying? That's the day everybody want to trade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Commissary. Man, let me get that chicken, man. Yeah. Let me get yeah. that. Ooh, this, this, and that. So a guy on my wing asked another guy, because he know he don't eat his chicken, and he always sell it. He said, say, man, let me get that chicken today. So he's like, nah, I'm a, my little partner just got off the bus. He ain't got nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and get on my tray. He said, man, quit acting like a little bro, man. Let me get that. You know what I'm saying? I got five soups and a Jack Mac for you right here. What's up? What's him? So he just bypassed it. Right now, he's at work passing out toilet paper. So as he's doing that, dude following him upstairs on the run, trying to talk him out of the chicken. Dude told him, just go ahead, man. I'm good. I ain't going to give it to you. So he was just like, man, push that nigga, who did this and that. The man caught that. So he said, I'm not finna be near another pussy ass nothing. Go on about your business. And he was an older gentleman. You know what I'm saying? So dude said, he said, man, I got something for you. So he already knew what that meant. He went and got his knife. He came back, but the old man was skilled. The old man ended up taking the knife from him and gutting him. And threw him over the rail. All behind some chicken? All behind a piece of chicken. Damn. Lost his life. That's over a piece of chicken. And and, and they take so, things serious. Oh they yeah, really yeah, because serious. everything is it, 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 it really you can't play around when you're in these conditions because everybody else is watching the situation and you gotta sleep and watch the nigga cause you don't know if he gonna come back and kill you. Right. 
So every day you like, I got to eliminate this problem for this problem. Eliminate me. Exactly. Real talk. Right. Yeah. So, you know, um, and see if you in a car or a gang or you riding with religion, it doesn't even matter if you get into an incident because you represent us, you got to handle that. And if you don't handle that, we going to handle you. Yeah, because I always thought that, you know, when you pick religion, everybody just leave you alone. No matter no, what race no, you are, you no, just can, you know, no, like a bypass. No, mm -hmm. no. Tell you something, the Muslims don't play. They don't play. They're going to make a lot. They're going to go to the mosque. They're going to do everything they're supposed to do. They're going to get their education. But if you disrespect one of them, they're going to tell you off the bone. Tileen service and all that. Yeah. And it don't matter where you stand in that, you're going to get your issue. Mm. That's real. That's real talk, man. Just was on, the, he on it today, man. So I, just, uh, just give us a little bit more insight on uh, just uh, um, what did you, did you write any music when you were locked up? I wrote a ton of music that I'm still sitting on. I haven't even got to release none of it yet. You know, Why? a lot of it. Just been busy, man. Just busy. I've written two novels while I was in there that actually got put out that you can go online and buy now. What's the name of them? Cup Boy, The Streets Made Me, Volume 1. It's a six-book series, mm -hmm. you know. Just talking about your life? Talking about my life. It's talking about uh, No Limit, a bunch of different things, you know, things that happened when Soldier Slim got killed, you know what I'm saying? Um you just got to get, you just got to get You got to give, okay, because the way how people are, right? Mm -hmm. You got to give them something juicy to say, man, I got to go get that book because he just said that and I need to go see what he's talking about. You got to give us something juicy to make us want to go get that book. So come on, give us a little sum. <laughs> give it up. I kind of I kind of like doing cliffhangers and stuff. I don't like giving up no info. <laughs> I really no, just a little, you know how you can still leave them on a cliffhanger, but, you know, give them something to that's like, I need to know the rest of that. Yeah. Let's put it like this. Everybody got their thoughts on of hearsay of what happened to Soldier Slim November 25th when it happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of that, that, that information is not accurate. Were you there? Yeah, I was there. Yeah. I okay. was there. Around the corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um... I basically told that and I had to rewrite the book because my lawyer told me if I want to ever leave prison. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was basically snitching mm. and I didn't even know it, mm. but I was just telling what I was seeing. Yeah. Your story. Telling what was going on with me. And so to tell what's going on with me and tell what goes on around everybody me. else, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? But I never realized that I was putting everybody else's business out there. Mm -hmm. So I was solving crimes and all kinds of stuff. I was like, Man, let me get that back. My bad. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So some things are accurate and some things are not. I'm not even going to tell you what's what. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let me but, ask you. I, I, I want to ask you a question about uh, just uh, being uh, from Louisiana and, and just the sound of the music that comes, the bounce sound that comes from down there. Um, who would you say is the number one producer ever to come out of New Orleans? <laughs> Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh. Manny Fresh. He the best to do it. The best to do it. Still the best to ever so do it. So you think he harder him. than Beast by the Pound? I mean, KLC so come on, a dog, man. man. Come KLC on, man. I had to say dog, that. You can't, no, That's you can't get away dog, that. Man. And, and Manny Fresh will tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> so, but is it different? Is it because Manny Fresh is, is he younger? A little bit young? No, no, hell, no, no. They no, all the no, same no. age. They same age. They same age. Cause yeah. he said, you know, KLC told a story on here. He said that. He knew Birdman, he knew Baby before Baby knew Manny Fresh. He knew both of them. He knew Manny Fresh and he knew Birdman before they even met each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He That's told true. me that. That's true. And he told me something else. And he, he also, remember he told me about, he said, he gave something on here that was so exclusive. He said that Birdman, he said he was in his house producing the beat to Body Body. And he said he had Birdman and he had Slim over there and he had... Soldier Slim, because he used to be with him, mm -hmm. and he had a uh, 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 Master P and him, all free and silks, all freestyling the body body before, right before it came out and got out. 
This nigga had his little trail that goes to his place. I ain't just grant that photo. That's all I can say. <laughs> but you know he, said, right? he said that happened yeah. at his at his yeah. place because yeah. he was producing that music. Yeah. So and I and I, I just look at the the way man y'all are special from down there the way that mm -hmm. the way that the music and stuff penetrates everybody you know throughout the world I mean that that it's, whole thing changed the whole dynamic of hip hop if you really want to be real about it it's because we put our pain in our music yeah. and you will never see it you know what I'm saying because we'll dance to pain we'll smile to pain before we sit up there and shed a tear wow dope. Did you, did, what about, uh, wasn't my boy Big Mike from down there? Big Mike yeah, would, would yeah, rap a lot. Yeah, 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 he was from yeah. down there. Uh -huh. Yeah, y'all got some, back, that's way back. I done reached back, nigga. I reach back <laughs> on you, don't play, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, I mean, who, who would you work with from down there if you had an opportunity? Man. From down there, if you had to pick one person that you could work with down there and y'all could put out a project from New Orleans, it's got to be New Orleans, uh, who would it be? Producer wise, or hell no! Wise? I'm talking about the whole project. You can pick a producer and an artist that you would like to work with to create a project from New Orleans. It'll be KLC and uh, BG. Yeah, that whole thing, boy, that whole slap right there. You're yeah, <laughs> God, that's my boy, man. You know me and KL, we talk a lot. That's my mm -hmm. boy for real, for real. And like, like he he. Me and him, we wrote for a minute in there about that music, man. Cause yeah. he, he rocked with me about PMC. He know I'm a big PMC fan. So he, we just talked about them working together on different projects, man. So uh, that was, what, what, so what, what make BG stick out so much for you? Because what I, is that? Don't I talk watched to him. me. Don't talk to me. Don't, boy, that don't win, man. <laughs> what sticks out for me is the realism because He's not a studio gangster. He actually lived everything he spoke. Yeah. Everything he spoke, he lived at. I watched it for myself. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got some artists. There's only like, mm, well, back then, I don't know about right mm -hmm. now. But back then, there was only like four people that can go project to project because we beat that hard. We beat by wards. There was no Crip blood and all that. It was none of that. You know what I'm saying? You banged by the ward. Third ward, Lewis fourth it was ward. his own parish. It was yeah. by itself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So you like to see a nigga, he got pink rag on, red one on his arm, green one on his head, and you know what I'm saying? But you better not mess with him because mm. he might be from the seventh ward, ninth ward, eighth ward, Lafitte, wherever. You know what I'm saying? And we beef hard. Mm. Wow, man. You know what I'm saying? From the wound to the tomb, we beef mm. hard. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to talk about that TNT, man. Let's talk about that new project that's getting ready to drop, man. When is it song. dropping? Friday. This Friday. It comes out this Friday. And, wh and what, what can we expect? Man, anybody out here that's roaming around Texas right now that missed that home flavor, you you damn sure going to get it on this one here. That's what I'm talking about. And what inspired I, it? Um, Actually, it was a joke between me and somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Because we was talking about the federal system mm -hmm. because when I went in there, I was telling them, they asked me, they was like, are you hot? You know what I'm saying? If you hot, you can't be here. I'm like, nah, I don't, I don't understand what you're talking about. Right. Like, I know I'm hot. You know what I'm saying? I'm lyrically in tune, client, this, this, and that. They talking something They else. talking about rat, and they talking about if your, your paperwork right. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So... I almost got killed my first day there because the I didn't thing. know the lingo. Right. Because when they asked me was I hot, I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they all looking at me and they clutching. You know what I'm saying? They was like, who you told on? I said, whoa, hold on, partner. I ain't told on nobody, you dig? Hold on, hold on. What y'all talking about? Hold on, hold on. <laughs> y'all got to give me some room right now. I'm so looking. I'm new. <laughs> yeah, my heart beating now because I see it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, you know, for this rap game, yeah, I'm hot, but I don't. I ain't telling on nobody. They're just like, well, you got 30 days to get that paperwork in. If that paperwork say anything less than what you just said, you ain't limping up out of here. So they check your paperwork. Yeah, that's they a call must. It paperwork party. Paperwork party. Yeah, ain't nobody finna say too much to you. Until your paperwork is shown, you ain't getting no care package. You're not getting no shower shoes, no soap, no nothing. 
You ain't get nothing. So if your people ain't take care of you for you got there and you had no money on so your books. So how you get the paperwork? You gotta write the you gotta write the uh the warrant? the courthouse. The courthouse. And they'll send it to you. Oh, okay. So that tells everything that happened in court. Everything. Who on your case, what your case is, and you better not be a child molester. You better not have no uh five K one, you know what I'm saying, which is telling on somebody, mm-hmm. you know. You get into that, you automatically out. So is there a person in the prison that is like above everybody else that checks the paperwork or is this everybody check see it? No. No. It's you that got, person. You got the speaker, then you got the person that checked the paperwork. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes that get passed down the line. Okay. After after like four years of me being there, it got passed down to me. Mm. And they didn't like me having the paperwork. Why? Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm I'm digging deeper. I'm digging deeper because some things are not told in the paperwork. Then so, how you find it out? Shit, if you're a street nigga, you can call home and shit, and you can get that info. What the streets saying? Because the streets are gonna say way more than what they saying in court. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you this, I, mm. and I don't want to move too fast, but how did you find time to write uh, nine movies? And out of those nine movies that you wrote. How many of them actually have been produced and put out? Neither of them has been produced and put out yet for the simple fact that it takes time and money. You know what I'm saying? And right now I don't have it. I'm looking Neither for one. it. You know, so I'm trying to take I'm trying to take the rap music and take this money mm-hmm. and put dump it into that. You know what I'm saying? I got it. But you wrote it just haven't filmed it yet. Yeah. But then if couldn't you present your writing to different publishings and be like, hey, can you help me do this? You used to can do that. The game is differently now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And what I look like giving you 85% of yeah. what, I, what I'm worth mm. and only taking 15 or 12. Because yeah. if they put in any work, that's what's going to happen. You have but, to put in all the work and let's bring the finished product and be like, yeah. I need to put this out. So that's why you got so many independent producers and mm-hmm. labels now. You know what I'm saying? Because... People want their money. They want to see their growth. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Fuck the shine. Like, come on, man. Mm-hmm. I get that on my own. So out of all that. nine, which one of them um, is your favorite and what is, what is it about? <laughs> if y'all are aware of who Stan Lee is, you know who Stan Lee is? Mm-mm. Stan Lee was the one, the white guy who wrote all I the Marvel exactly movies. You know oh, who he is. That, yeah. We and he died me. not too long ago. Yeah, sure I did. know exactly who that is. Well, I fell in love with that style of writing. Mm-hmm. I got, I started writing all the gang, the ki- gang, gang, mm-hmm. kill, killer, hood stuff, and this, this, and that. And then after a while, I got bored with it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, because it's your life. Yeah, I'm bored with that. So I wanted to try something else. So then I started writing children's books. Mm-hmm. And I went from children's books and like, I wonder if I can write a movie script. So I went to the library, started. You know, studying. studying books, you know what I'm saying? Started ordering books, everything on it, mm-hmm. and started now learn how to write screenplays on my own. I taught myself. So after that, you know, my favorite movies was Why always Why didn't you like, go to school for it? Because I know when you're in prison, they send you to school for whatever you want. Yeah, ain't no school enough for that. Oh. Yeah. Because yeah. people, people go to prison and they come out being this and that. Let, let, me, let me explain that to you. And me, me and her had this conversation mm-hmm. not too long ago. They'll give you all kind of classes. They'll just find mm-hmm. somebody who know it in prison, an inmate, and say, we'll pay you 33 cents a day or whatever this and that. To teach. teach. Teach this class. Now, you learning it, and they'll give you the certificate. But when you come out here and actually come out here and try to present it to a company and get hired, they don't honor that. Wow. Hey, man, um, so how can people get a hold to you if they're trying to link up with you? Uh, IG, Ice Jizzle, you know, I-C-E-G-I-Z-Z-L-E, you know, at uh, Instagram. And um, I just recently uploaded a TikTok, still don't understand it yet. <laughs> um, I got a Facebook, but it's for fam only. Um, pretty much that's it. Or you can highlight Gen Music Group, which is George Lopez. Mm-hmm. Yeah, shout out George, man. He the one made this happen too. Let me ask you a question. Uh, top three artists of all time, dead or alive? Any genre. Number one. Any genre. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, Michael Jackson. Michael okay. Jackson, number, number one, two. number two. Um, Soldier Slim. Hey, number, number three. three. And number three would be, uh, man, it's hard, man. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. <laughs> it's because always harder got, than number three. I would say, um, Damn, now I can't even think of his name. New edition. New edition. <laughs> Check it, man. Yeah. Hey, man, thank you so much for coming on the know. show, man. The name Ice Jizzle, where did that come from? <laughs> Formerly, I was animal. Mm -hmm. When I left a certain situation, we ain't going to say that name. When I left a certain situation, I got blackballed. So when I got blackballed, I could no longer use the name because I didn't take the time to do the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So... It was up under the label's name. Mm -hmm. So I had to change my name. So since I rocked a lot of jewelry, they just like, we can stalk all you Icy Black or, you know what I'm saying, Ice Jeezy. It was a joke. And it mm -hmm. stuck. You know what I'm saying? And Jizzle was always my favorite artist, so it became Ice Jeezy. Ice Jeezy. But when I came home from this bid, I had to change it to Jizzle because somebody's out there using my name. Check it, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show, brother. We love you. You all, you be, you officially Boss Talk 101 approved, man. For sure, it's man. a whole different ball game now. Yes, I don't sir. know where else you've been, but you here now. Yes, and it sir. goes down over here at Boss Talk man. 101, man. Gotta Check it, man. Keep it tight. Hey, man, it's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.